To see the fully uncut version of this video, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. What's that? What's happening? My name is John Joe Lyons and today I'm here to present to you my review for Nina Forever. Written and directed by Ben and Chris Blaine, Nina Forever stars... All of these lot. After his girlfriend Nina dies in a car crash, Rob unsuccessfully attempts suicide. As he begins to overcome his grief, he falls in love with a co-worker, Holly. Their relationship is complicated when Nina, unable to find rest in the afterlife, comes back to life to sarcastically torment them whenever they have sex. Rob and Holly must find a way to deal with the situation and put Nina to rest. Nina Forever is a film that I saw the year it released and even though I haven't revisited it since, it's always stuck in my mind as an example of quality low budget cinema. I've always remembered it as incredibly well made Made, well acted and if you have any experience with the subject matter, a life damaging inability to change or move on, very, very relatable. Horrifyingly so. Again, it's been years since I last saw the film so I am worried that I put it on a kind of pedestal, taking a bad and painful experience and only remembering the good parts, looking back on it with rose tinted glasses and that's why I want to return. But I'm sure that's not the case. We're gonna have a lot to talk about here so let's not waste any more time. Oh and I am aware that over the last few videos my humour has become quite crass, distasteful one might say. Well, seeing as we're dealing with a proper film this week and I really want to cast star Abigail Hardingham in a future project, I'm going to be doing away with all of that stuff. Okay? That means no objectification of the female stars, all poetic speeches about how much I want one of them to sh** directly into my mouth, no comments about how perfect Abigail Hardingham's t are, none, and above all else, most importantly, absolutely no c jokes whatsoever. Alright? And if anyone has anything to say about my t-shirt, let me explain. It's from Rogue Print Co and it actually represents Cambridge University Mountaineering. Alright? So get your mind out of the f gutter. I'm turning over a new leaf. From now on this channel is going to be meaningful, intellectual and thoughtful. Like Ryan Hollinger, but with a bigger penis and only half as Irish. Yeah, I'm half Irish. My name's John Joe Lyons. The only more Irish name than that is Paddy McPotato Face. Get ready to remember that one relationship that you can't let go of and actually makes you short of breath every time you think about it. Like, why couldn't you just tell me the truth? I know it would have hurt, but we both would have been better off for it. Imagine having all that time back that we lost in the misery of each other. Like, I don't even know what you got out of it. Why you kept me around? We both know it wasn't because you loved me. This is Nina Forever. The movie begins with the sound of a crash as we cut to a biker lying motionless, their smoking bike not too far away. And we hold on the shot for a while, a long while, as the smoke dissipates and nature returns to normal. Then this happens. Cut to these women talking about the biker, Rob, and how the accident was actually a suicide attempt. This is Holly, who says that she'd love it if her boyfriend tried to kill himself because she died and the other two mock her. They say Holly doesn't want to f*** him really, only save him, but advise she won't be able to fix him as they go back to work. Cut to Holly being broken up with by her current boyfriend. He says he wants to be friends and make sure she's okay. He then tells her he thinks he's too dark for her and Holly is barely able to hold back laughter. Um, not that that's... I mean, it's great. You're a lovely person and... F*** off, David. You know nothing about me. Cut to Holly at work as she watches Rob from afar. Rob, no, no, are you then? You okay? Cut to the stock room where Rob is listening to music and icing his arm wound. Holly appears and asks if she can look at it as she's training to be a paramedic. You know, you should have kept this moist at my scar now. You don't need to tell me about keeping my wound moist, love, eh? Sorry, sorry, that's the old me. No moist wound jokes. No, serious. Serious mature. Ryan Hollinger, Ryan Hollinger, Ryan Hollinger. Rob leans back, plugging his earbud back in when Holly asks what he's listening to. He hands it to her and she sits, closing her eyes to listen, and as she does this, he watches her. He then asks what she thinks, saying she doesn't like it. Holly says she does, but he repeats she doesn't. She then offers him an orange, grabbing a pomegranate, cutting it and tearing it open. I 
Love this shot. It's got the sexual undertones of the fingers, lips and sucking sounds mixed with the violence of the breaking open of the fruit and the blood red juices. Very much setting the tone of what's to come. Cut to Holly in bed when she gets a text from Rob saying he wishes he'd kissed her. She smiles and places the phone on the pillow, moving over to give him his side of the bed before falling asleep. Cut to a dead fox on a busy road and then to the pair walking. They look like they're about to kiss when Robert asks what made Holly talk to him, saying no one else does, they just treat him like he's gonna kill himself. She says he does a pretty good impression of someone who wants to kill themselves when Rob steps backward into the road. She joins him and they hold hands as we cut to Holly in her bedroom the next morning. You're too good for me. I don't want to hurt you. You're not going to. Cut to Holly in class being lectured about the importance of the paramedic uniform and the three Ds. Careful now. Discipline, determination and distance, stressing that she isn't a superhuman and can't save everyone. And as this speech plays, we cut to Holly getting ready, picturing herself getting naked for Rob. Cut to Rob's flat as Holly puts on a CD she's made for him. They sip wine when he goes in for a kiss and she spills a bit, apologising. Rob calls her sweet and in response, she smashes the glass then begins to undress. All while cutting to the bed as we see a small speck of blood begin to emerge. And then they make love. <laughs> and it's, it's pr pretty full on. But... It's beautifully shot, well acted, nicely edited, uh, uh, uh. oh no, oh no, I did a cum, I did a cum. We also see Rob's tattoo, which reads Nina forever. The editing's a bit all over the place here, mixing up the timeline of their evening in a way that I really like. It's then that we see bloody hands emerge from beneath the sheets with the corpse of Nina flopping onto the bed. Oh God, not again. At first, Nina seems panicked, calling out for Rob who is in the corner looking like he's about to shit himself. That's when she notices Holly and asks him to introduce them, which he does. Holly? This is Nina, my girlfriend. Dead. Girlfriend. Honestly, she doesn't look that bad for a dead woman. I'd shoot some goo her way. Nina makes a dig at Rob saying that she might be dead, but at least she still has standards when he tells Holly that she should leave. She then goes to touch Nina, thinking it's a dream and catches a slap to the face. Nina says she's not his ex-girlfriend, calling her death more of a break and then tells Holly to get the fuck out of her bedroom before pulling herself up to Rob's face. She describes what she remembers since her death, her mouth filled with blood, the mortuary slab, the funeral, then him and Holly. She tells him to kiss her, which he does, causing Holly to storm out, cutting her foot on the broken glass. Holly! <coughs> Holly slams the door shut, and when Rob turns back to Nina, she's gone. Cut to morning at Holly's. She applies a bandage to her wound and we cut to her looking up the details of Nina's death. It seems she lost control of her car, causing it to crash and was pronounced dead at the scene. Cut to Holly in class completely zoned out. They're doing a compressions exercise when she gets a text from Rob saying that she doesn't need to see him again and thanking her for trying. Hello? Yeah, uh, we lost him. Shame, I know, but um, I did get a text from my boyfriend. Oh, sorry, I don't mean boyfriend, I mean supermarket buddy. Ugh, f off. Not the off, Josh. To be fair, this performance is Oscar worthy, simply for how much I instantly want to smash this c**t's face into a toothy paste. So, that's a compliment, I guess. Cut to Holly in halls, unwrapping her wound as in the background we see the c**t from the class glancing over at her. Cut to work where Holly's colleagues deliver more bitchy dialogue asking how her suicidal boyfriend is. They ask if he's mentioned his dead girlfriend yet and Holly says it came up before walking off. Cut to a load of misty grey shots of British streets and then to Rob's where he lays on the sofa staring at the broken glass on the floor. He gets up and moves to the bedroom in silence looking at the bloody mess left behind by Nina.
Cut to a montage of Rob clearing his place up, flipping the mattress and cleaning up the blood Holly left behind. Cut to the laundrette where he considers washing the sheets but after noticing a kid watching him dumps them off and gets new ones. Cut to the cemetery. He checks his phone seeing he has no new messages as we cut to him sitting in the car with Nina's mother. She asks if he's met anyone and he says he hasn't. They tend to the flowers at Nina's grave and we cut to the parents house where Rob stands next to one of Nina's paintings checking his texts before being greeted by the dad. Cut to the kitchen where the dad is about to read a chapter of his book to Rob when he asks when Nina did that painting. The mother says her A-levels and the dad says it was the best one there. His phone vibrates so Rob quickly excuses himself to go and check it but finds it's just a promo for a pizza place. Cut to lunch where the mum asks Rob about returning to his studies. He says his math brain has dried up and he doesn't see the point in it when she asks what the point of working in a supermarket is. The dad quickly changes the subject asking about Rob's bike which he says is fine. The mum then stands up and says this is ridiculous before leaving. The dad then takes this opportunity to show Rob his new chapter. He pissed in the way only men can with his hands. He then says this writing thing is new for him while clumsily suggesting that Rob finds something new to do in light of recent events. Rob notices that the dad is playing Nina's mix on his laptop and we cut to them saying goodbye. As he walks away, Rob goes to text Holly an apology but thinks better of it. Cut to Rob sitting wrapped in a blanket staring at his bed. He shuts the bedroom door and we cut to him at work stacking shelves and obviously feeling like deep fried dog shit. Cut to Rob staring at a picture of Nina. He lies it flat as we cut to him on the sofa again. He sits up and goes to the bedroom looking at the bed when there's a knock at the door. Is she... Do you want it to be? And I like this exchange as it says so much about these two characters. His acceptance of being left alone once more and her weird underlying psychopathy. Maybe psychopathy is a bit too strong a word but you know what I'm saying. So he's gone. You stopped texting. Cut inside as Rob wraps Holly in a blanket and they start kissing when he stops saying she'll be there. Holly replies that they can cope and they start kissing again. Rob then stops once more and hangs his head as Holly leans over and kisses his tattoo. Cut to the pair in bed as they start having sex. We see blood seeping up through the sheets which Holly touches and jumps but tells Rob she's okay. They try to power through and in one of the best moments of the film Nina's hands reach up and begin touching Holly. Nina then appears in bed with them which causes Rob to stop. Holly then leans over and kisses Nina with Nina saying she's so warm. She then kisses Rob and Rob kisses Nina thanking Holly. He then goes back to banging Holly as Nina watches until she's unable to anymore and turns her head away. <laughs> Honestly, back in the day when I had normal human emotions, that would have really fucked me up. Anyway, Holly notices this and tries to give Nina attention, and by attention I mean... But, uh, Nina's not into it. She says she's got tinnitus, lights zigzagging in her eyes, and a shard of glass in the back of her throat. Those being the only things that she can feel. Holly lays back down and Nina whispers to her that he's using her and then makes another remark about how young she looks. Holly says she isn't old and Nina replies she's dead. She then details having sex with Rob on the beach and going down on him at her parents house. Rob then tells Nina that Holly is his girlfriend and that's the way it's gonna be. Nina argues they never broke up and Rob has to remind her once again that she died. She asks if he wants to break up now and he says no. Rob then tells Nina that this doesn't mean he's going to forget her and she asks what he thinks he means by that. He gets frustrated saying he never knows what she wants and she counters that she doesn't want anything. Cut to morning as Nina walks past the tree Nina died at and a sign that she probably should have seen at the time. Cut to Rob waking up in bed alone. He walks out into the living room and is surprised to see Holly sitting on the sofa with a cup of tea. He smiles and we cut to them dumping the bloody sheets and making the bed as Holly puts more packets of sheets on top of the wardrobe. They kiss again and we cut to the graveyard as Holly talks about memorializing Nina, showing her how she feels. Cut to Holly getting a Nina tattoo as Rob talks to her about the importance of moving on, his crash and how he wanted to be scarred from it so Nina would always be there and the night he got his tattoo. He talks about the art that Nina liked when he stops himself asking Holly if she's sure she wants to hear all of this. She says of course and we cut to them banging again. <laughs> Nina is there and says to Rob she doesn't know why they bought white sheets when Holly shows her her new tattoo. Nina calls her a silly little girl saying that this isn't about her, it's about him and tells Holly that she didn't even notice Nina didn't get involved this time. Holly says she thought she didn't want to and Nina replies she doesn't want to get off. 
she doesn't want. Holly then gets dressed again, making it clear to Nina she won't drive her away. Holly asks Rob if he's gonna say anything and he says he loves her. Nina says that her not being forgotten is the problem and points to Holly's new tattoo, remarking that they just made that one worse. Cut to the pair laying a red sheet on the bed as Holly asks Rob if he wants her to come back. He says he doesn't, but he doesn't know how to make her stop. He then asks Holly if she'll come to meet Nina's parents as he wants to show them he's moving on and then maybe Nina will accept this too. Cut to the graveyard as Rob and Nina's mum hug and then make their way back to the car. We then cut to another expertly edited scene as we relive how disastrous lunch was. The mother preparing a roast when Holly's a vegetarian, Holly finding out about Rob working towards a PhD, something she wasn't aware of before, and the fact that he visits the parents every week, and all of this culminating in the dad breaking down when he sees Holly sitting in Nina's chair. I'm sorry. It's just... Holly then asks what the thing with the mum was. We just have to keep on living. Don't we, Rob? Also, it's worth noting that the mum is quite touchy-feely with Rob. I don't know if the film is trying to suggest that she wants to bang Rob. Maybe it's an attempt to get closer to her dead daughter by getting down by her dearly departed dead daughter's devoted. Ever think of that? Hmm? The mum asks what books Holly likes, with Holly letting on she doesn't read much outside of her studies. She then finds out that Holly is 19 and says Rob must be her first proper boyfriend. Rob says they need him and Holly gets in a huff getting on the bus as Rob follows. He tells her to stop being so childish and Holly accuses him of wanting to f*** Nina's mum. And I love how awkward this brother acts as Holly sits next to him and Rob tries to apologise. Do you want to stay here? No, you're fine. Massive shouts to bus man, breakout performance of the film and literally f***ing adorable. Holly says he made her feel worthless and Rob apologises saying he only wanted Holly to meet the mum because he loves her. She then tells him to prove it. Cut to Holly and Rob banging on Nina's grave. <sighs> nice. Nina then turns up, whacked off Rob and once again makes it clear that she ain't going nowhere. Every drop of semen that has trickled down your belly has been a splash of sunshine on his grief-stricken brow. I have a really confusing boner right now and I don't apologise. Nina then gets in Holly's face saying that she means nothing to him or her when Rob snaps telling her that's enough. He hugs Nina and tells her it's over. He won't see her again and he's going to remove every trace of her from his flat. Nina then tells Holly she thinks he's going to ask her to move in with him and wonders if she can handle that. Cut to Holly moving in and telling Rob that he won't be able to visit Nina's parents anymore, to which he agrees. We then see her getting rid of bags, presumably full of Nina's things, and Rob offering to sell his bike so they can get a car. Finally, we see Holly washing Rob's hair and then the pair on the sofa. Cut to Holly going through Rob's jaws while he sleeps when she finds a top that belongs to Nina and a bunch of printing block letters. Cut to Holly and Rob in bed as Holly is unable to sleep. She checks under the bed looking for Nina, but there's nothing there. Cut to Holly brushing her teeth. She goes to put her toothbrush down when Nina appears saying that that's where she put hers. Yep, there too. We then go through this slightly comedic, slightly infuriating sequence as Holly begins to notice all the places Nina's things used to be as the dead woman appears to her at will. <laughs> well, this is weird. Why do you think I'm still here? She tries to get rid of more and more stuff, but Nina keeps showing up until eventually she repaints the whole flat. And again, for anyone who's ever been in a similar situation in real life, this is disturbingly accurate. It's getting kind of hard to watch. Holly, what the f***? Why is this all white? Cut to Holly driving the couple's new car and parking up at Nina's tree, and then Rob arriving at home once more and noticing Holly wearing the top she found. Cut to Rob at Nina's parents' house. The mum talks about wanting to leave the dad, but says he wouldn't stand a chance finding a new relationship, and then begs Rob not to abandon them, to which he says of course not. Does she want to f*** Rob? I'm sure she doesn't, and anyone that thinks that is just judging the surface level of the film in a really basic way, but... Does she want to f*** Rob? Were they already f***ing behind Nina's back? Did the mum orchestrate Nina's death? Is Rob Nina's real father? No, 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 wait, wait, no. 
Cut back to Rob and Holly's place. Rob's selling the printing press at some seaside town and tells Holly they'll stay up there and make a weekend of it. All the while, Holly lies staring at some final remnant of Nina. They get in the car and start driving as Holly squeezes an X and thinks about their home. Both look unhappy until Holly opens her hand, revealing the X is gone and they both lighten up. Cut to them getting to their bed and breakfast and then getting all sexual with the printing press. Holly tells Rob to scratch her to make her bleed, but he refuses. She then goes over to the press and puts her arm in it. Oh, no. No, no, please stop. Shut up, Rob. This is what she wanted. Nina tells Rob that Holly's bringing her back. That even when she's not there, she's let Nina get under her skin. That this is what she won. She lets go as Rob profusely apologises. Nina tells Rob it's not his fault and Holly tells him that she can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't look at you without seeing her. Cut to Rob on the beach alone and then to Holly all paramedicked up at a car crash. The crash also happens to be where Nina died and we watch as Holly edges her way up to the car expecting to see Nina but when she gets there thankfully it's just some other woman. Holly snaps into gear telling the woman she's going to be alright. And when she does this she has this super weird tone to her voice, scary even. Just keep talking to me okay, now what's your name? Cassie. Okay Cassie, my name's Holly. You're gonna be okay. I know this is supposed to be her taking her job seriously, but if it was me, I'd be worried about what she was going to do to my body after putting me under. Cut to Holly in the locker room looking at her arm and enter the bus stop where she's sitting with that incredibly irritating cunt from her class. He goes on about how everything is different now that they've saved a life when she puts her hand on his. Cut to Rob at a restaurant checking his messages and then to Holly in the head. He sees her tattoo and asks who Nina is, but she brushes it off and they get down to it. Cut back to Rob where we get this awful scene as Rob tells Nina's parents he's got a new job and is essentially breaking up with them. He tries to anyway when the dad has this heartbreaking monologue. Having you as a constant reminder that our daughter is dead and you're not. And I do mean that. The dad tells Rob not to think that they haven't done anything for him because they bloody have and Rob apologises before leaving. Cut back to Nina as she blindfolds the bloke and tells him to f*** her. And that is when Nina appears. Yes. Cut to the bloke getting kicked out of the room and then to the supermarket and the graveyard. Cut back to Holly's when there's a knock at the door. She answers it to find Rob who says she hasn't been answering his texts. He tells her he loves her but she again says it's not gonna work out. And in this moment, another that I love, Holly steps aside revealing the blood soaked bed and admitting it was her issue, not Rob's. He asks her if she's going to be okay and she shakes her head no while saying yes. Rob leaves as we see Holly clearing up the bed and putting down black sheets. She lays down and the film cuts to black. The end. Well, nothing like a film about not being able to let go of the past to really make you obsessively think about the past. So many mistakes. Nina Forever is a perfect example of doing a lot with very little as the film manages to tell an engaging and emotional story with uncomfortably relatable writing and performances on an incredibly low budget. The narrative strikes a chord as it tells a familiar story of jealousy while maybe not going down the route that one might expect given the two main characters. As it is Rob in mourning, it's easy to assume that it's his inability to let go and move on that is causing Nina's resurrection, but in the end when it's revealed to be the fault of Holly, it takes the metaphor that Nina serves and turns it on its head. It's Holly's obsession with Rob's past relationship, it's importance to to Rob and Holly's insecurity that she'll never be able to live up to the ghost of Nina that poisons their relationship from the start. The lesson of the film is not just about being able to move on but a strong reminder to live in the moment. That obsession with that which you cannot change will only damage any future chance of happiness. I love by the end of the film no real lessons are learned either. The failed relationship with Rob going on to ruin future relationships and again as somebody who can unfortunately identify with Holly's insecurity and destructive obsession the ending leaves a very bloody taste in my mouth. And all of this is sold by the expert performances. Key and Barry plays Rob with a 
an understated misery that is heartbreaking from start to finish. We're never quite sure if his falling for Holly is rooted in real love or just the need to feel anything other than the agony of loss. It isn't until the end that we see Rob truly change, but by that point, it's too late. And as Rob turns and walks down that hall, at least we can take solace in the fact that he's reached the end of his arc, that he's changed for the better. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for Holly, who seems doomed to deal with the specter of Nina for years to come, or until she gets therapy. There's something about Abigail Hardingham's performance in this film that I love, and I don't know if it's more the performance of a woman slowly allowing jealousy to erode her newfound love, or the fact that I feel like there's a very, very f up person lurking just beneath the surface of the character. I'd love to know if this was done on purpose or if Abigail just gives off this vibe, but it feels to me like having sex with a dead body might not be completely out of her wheelhouse. The character, I mean. I'd love to see her play a sociopath slasher in something, and honestly, I've already started jotting down ideas. Finally, Fiona O'Shaughnessy is perfect in the role of Nina. Her voice is suitably haunting, but for me, her biggest achievement is in her movement, or lack thereof. She really conveys the broken up corpse she's supposed to be, and every movement looks so painful as she drags herself around. You can almost hear her snap bones ripping into muscle underneath her pale skin. Speaking of ripping muscle, the movie wasn't as bloody as I remember it being. Now again, given the movies I usually review, I'm sure my tolerance for gore is higher than most, but I really think they could have gone a lot further with the nasty here. I wish I could have seen the whole room covered in gore after each of Nina's visits. Sure, the makeup on Nina is good and they do let the blood flow, but I just wanted to see more. Plus, it would have been awesome to see Nina decompose over the course of the film, getting harder and harder to look at as a visual representation of what Holly's problem was doing to their relationship. Think the best friend in American Werewolf in London, but with more sex. Finally, on that note, the sex scenes could have gone a lot harder in terms of the inclusion of Nina. Having one proper threesome scene between them would have been absolutely awful and it looks like they're gonna get there a couple of times, but unfortunately, they always pull back at the last minute. I mean, I get why, but it's not what I would have done. All in all, Nina Forever is a great example of low-budget horror filmmaking with brilliant performances and writing that I personally find inspiring. I do wish they could have gone further with some of the nastier elements, but for what it is, Nina Forever is a near-perfect piece of low-budget British cinema. So that was my review of Nina Forever. What do you lot think? Apart from a couple of minor issues, I'm glad the film still holds up as well as it does. I was kind of shocked with how far they went with some of the sex scenes here. Nothing like a bit of blood and sex to get your Monday morning off to a good start. Speaking of which, if you want to see all of that blood and f***ing completely uncut and early, head over to patreon.com forward slash Lyons. There you gain access to the uncut reviews, the slasher comic breakdowns, the Patreon exclusive reviews, and all the other Patreon exclusive content, as well as becoming a part of a really f***ed up family and helping me stave off the sweet release of self-murder for another day. I'm joking, but am I? Yes. But am I? <laughs> yes. And all that could be yours for as little as a dollar a month. You can pledge more. I really appreciate it. I need to buy a new shovel and I think hire someone else to help. I don't know if you've ever dug up the grave of your ex-girlfriend, but it's a real hassle. And if you want to get a hold of this f***ing awesome t-shirt that I'm wearing today, you can go over to Road Print Co. on Instagram. The link's in the description of the video. They've got loads of awesome stuff there. And if you do purchase anything, make sure to put my name in the notes so they know where you came from. So that's it for another week. Like the video, leave a comment, and click subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel. My name's John Joe Lyons, and yes, in case you're wondering, mine and your mother's relationship will continue even after she dies. Here I have a signed and detailed contract that states after she's buried and I dig her up, she's my property. If anything, I think it's going to be the next step for us, and I for one can't f***ing wait. Okay? Alright. Love you. Bye.